Hello and welcome to the Osteo Physio YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about why does my back hurt? So to kick us off, Louise is going to start talking about disc pain. Oh yeah, indeed. So disc protrusions or disc prolapses are incredibly, incredibly common. Most commonly seen between the ages of 25 and 40 due to the fact that we still have really nice hydrated disc material. On a protruded disc, i.e. the inner part of the disc is still contained within the annulus fibrosus, what people typically present with is that kind of flex position, that really sore antalgic posture, lots of muscle guarding and not necessarily experiencing nerve pain down into the leg. It typically goes across the lower back like a band-like pain because of the nerve supply to the disc and like we said, it can be incredibly sore. What we would look at as osteopaths is relaxing around the area, getting it moving, looking at any other triggers that might be aggravating the pain, i.e. sitting or flexing and trying to improve overall mechanics into the lower back and pelvis. Yes, and then if the disc material that you're talking about does come out of the mm -hmm. disc, then sometimes it can press on the nerves, yeah. the spinal nerves. So then you get unilateral, one-sided sciatic symptoms, so pain down yeah. the back of the leg, pins and needles into the foot. Sometimes we can track what level the disc has protruded mm -hmm. because of the symptoms in the leg, so we can help sort of match them up together. Yeah, and actually you can get it both sides. So yeah, you're completely right. You More commonly one-sided, it actually depends on where and how the disc has, has prolapsed. So if it's most commonly going posterior and lateral, so back and outwards, more commonly one-sided. If it's a central disc prolapse, you can experience it through both sides. And that is why when we do a consultation, we're so, so, so detailed in terms of any concerning symptoms, for example, bowel or bladder changes, any numbness, and we wanna know and track the neurological symptoms. So any weakness that's, that's flagged up with it, any kind of ridiculous symptoms, so i.e. any sensation changes, like you said, and checking how it is. Because if anything's incredibly complex, of course we would refer on if the symptoms are concerning. If not, we would wanna be tracking it over time and keeping the body moving. And then that moves us on to facet dysfunction. Yeah, so this is, this is probably the most common thing that we see, or diagnose in clinic anyway. Um, someone's been sat awkwardly or they've lifted something awkwardly and then they're getting pain usually down one side of the back. Yeah. It might be spasming as well um, and you get very, very tight muscles all through the postural muscles on one side, sometimes referring pain down into the buttock or if it's impinging on the nerve as it leaves the because it, as it goes past that facet joint, you get symptoms yeah. down into the leg as well. Yeah. Usually a much faster recovery than a, than a disc injury. Oh yeah. Um, and much easier to manage, but still extremely painful and uncomfortable. Yeah, and you normally find on testing, depending on which side, obviously the facet joint's been aggravated, whether it's locked in a position or the capsule around the joint has got very, very sore and inflamed, you normally find on testing, if you load the joints together, so sometimes extending, and going over to one side can be more painful or like you said if it's spasmed and locked in a position what you can find is it coming away from that position where it's actually relatively comfy and wants to stay can be really really sore so we would look at softening mobilization articulation you know really moving around the area to get it completely relaxed so for us as osteopaths it's all about how can we regain that lovely lordotic curve so that lovely extension curve in the lower back keep the person moving and obviously prevent it from happening again. Absolutely, yes. And I think the other one we want to cover is DDD, so if you want to break that down. Yeah, so late, later on in life, when you've had a bit of wear and tear in the back, perhaps you've had some disc prolapses in the past, um, your discs are a little bit dehydrated. Mm -hmm. What can happen is everything starts to squash down a little bit. The vertebra get closer together, the joints get more loaded, mm -hmm. and this whole process we call uh, degenerative disc disease. Yeah. It sounds horrendous, but basically most of the time it just means wear and tear. Um, it can predispose a bit of instability. If you imagine you've got two vertebra slowly getting pushed together, the ligaments and everything yeah. that hold it all nice and tight essentially get a little bit flappy. It's a bit like if you had a tent and you lowered the tent pole, <laughs> the guy ropes would get a little bit loose. That's a really good, that's a really good analogy. Yeah, and, and the, the tent's more likely to blow over. So yeah. improving things like core strength and yes. stuff like that is really, really important with people. Most of the time over 50, 60 mm -hmm. into 70s who've got this degree of instability. And what they'll probably find is that at least once or twice a year, their back will go into the spasm. They've overdone it, they've weakened yeah. their core perhaps by doing too much, and then they get this spasm 
and yeah. um, then they come and see us. But it's a, it's a chronic ongoing thing, this DDD. Yeah, and so like you said, it can either be unstable or it can go into that stability phase where they feel like they've stiffened, they've lost their range of movement, they've lost their level of flexibility. And that's where outside of the treatment, what we would look at to enhance what we're doing is getting you to add in stretching, flexibility, as well as stability for the core. Because you think if you've got a lovely, strong, stable structure around your lower back, it's a lot easier to do stuff like gardening, you know, stuff around the house without predisposing that soreness, that instability or sharpness on movement. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with all of these back things, the, the, it's, it's all very well having a, a diagnosis like a disc pain or a facet injury, but we want to know what's what's really caused that so yeah. as osteopaths. That's our, you know, our, our goal, really. And one of the reasons is, if we have a look at Louise's back, we want to have a look, is, is there an area of the spine which isn't moving particularly well? Is there a little bit of a twist? Is the pelvis a little bit crooked? So all of these things could be contributing to extra strain or pressure on one part of the back and then that's when the, the back goes and then you get yeah. your back pain. So that's that's yeah, what we're trying to achieve, isn't it? Achieve 360 health. <laughs> Looking at everything. <laughs>